Hey guys, it's Emma. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will give you a tutorial on SQL window functions. Window functions are very useful in the day-to-day -day work as a data scientist. Also, in SQL interviews, you will almost always get questions that can be solved by window functions efficiently. So in this video, I will try to give you a comprehensive overview of window functions and let you know what they are and how to write window functions. If you are new to window functions or you have learned it before and need to brush up your knowledge, this video is right for you. I will also give you some examples to show you the difference between different functions, specifically how outputs differ for different functions. At the end of this video, you will have a good understanding of window functions. On top of that, I have selected some SQL problems for you to practice so that you can get better at it by doing more practice. You can get the link in the description below. I hope it will help you with your job as well as interview preparation. Before we start, in the previous video on SQL interview, I talked about three common types of SQL problems that you should master before your data science interviews. Make sure you check it out. All right, let's get started. So first things first, what is a window function? A window function applies a function to a window, and we can use it to perform calculations across a set of rows or a group. For example, we use some window functions to get a few summary statistics of a column called value. Here we only have one group, and we can obtain the sum, the average value, the count of rows, etc. of this group. To understand window functions, I think it's helpful to compare a window function with a group by statement that most of you are familiar with. We can use group by to group rows that have the same values into one group and obtain summary statistics. The group by statement returns one row per group. But unlike a group by, using a window function does not cause rows to be grouped into a single output row. It means that each row remains its separate identity. This is very convenient for calculating statistics within each group or comparing one row with other rows within the same group. Second, for the group by statement, we can only use aggregate functions such as sum and count. While for window functions, there are a lot more functions you can choose from, including ranking functions and analytic functions, which we will talk about later. Now you know what a window function is and the difference between group by and a window function. Let's take a look at the syntax of a window function and see how to write one. It may sound too simple, but the fact is we only need to consider two things when writing a window function. The first part is to define a window or a group. We need to specify a window frame, which is written after the over clause and inside the parentheses. The second part is to select a function. We need to select a function to use, which is written in front of the over clause. Also, when we use window functions in a query, it will be applied in the select clause together with selecting other columns. The syntax is not too complicated, right? Next, we'll look at each part in detail. We'll talk about how to define a window first, followed by how to select a function, because we need to understand how windows are created before specifying the function will be applied on top of a window frame. Okay, let's first look at different ways to define a window. We have the over clause containing the over keyword followed by a parenthesis. Inside of the parenthesis, the syntax allows different arguments, specifically a partition by argument, an order by argument, and a rows or range argument. The partition by argument divides the query result into different partitions. Order by defines the logical order of the rows within each partition of the result. And the rows range limits the rows within a partition by specifying the starting and end points. Firstly, the partition by argument creates window frames by partitioning values so that rows within the same value belongs to the same partition. We can partition one or more columns or partition a subquery or function or user defined variable. If partition by is not specified, the function considers all rows as a single group. For example, suppose we have a user activity table with a user ID and a date. If we want to partition the data by user, we can simply write partition by user ID. Then the rows with the same user ID are considered as one partition. We can also partition multiple columns. We can write partition by user ID date. Then the rows with the same user ID and the same date are considered as one partition. Next, the order by argument defines the logical order of the rows within each partition. The default order is ascending order. 
we can order by one on multiple columns or an expression. It can be used by itself or together with a partition by argument to create an ordered window frame. Using the user activity table as an example, we can partition by the user ID and order by date. This will create a partition of all activities that the user performed in ascending order based on date. The last argument in the over clause is rows or range, specifying the starting and end points of a window frame. This way, we can create fixed size windows, which can be used to computing moving averages or running totals with a limited number of rows. If we don't specify this argument, the default value is from the start of the window frame to the current row. The difference between rows and range is that the rows argument does it by specifying a fixed number of rows that precede or follow the current row. The range clause, on the other hand, names the rows logically. It specifies the range of values with respect to the value of the current row. We can use between and end to specify the starting and ending boundary points of a window. Typically, these expressions can be used to specify the starting point, unbounded preceding, preceding and the current row. Unbounded preceding specifies that the window starts at the first row of the partition. Preceding indicates the number of rows or values to precede the current row. And the current row means the window starts at the current row. Expressions can be used to specify the endpoints are unbounded following, following and current row. Unbounded following specifies that the window ends at the last row of the partition. Following indicates the number of rows or values to follow the current row. And the current row means the window ends at the current row. As you can see, current row can be specified as both a starting and end point. Let's say an example on how to specify a window. We can specify a window as order by date, rows between three preceding and the current row. This will create a window frame with size of four, including three rows before the current row and the current row. Another example is to use rows between the current row and the three following. This will create a window frame with size of four, including the current row and the three rows following the current row. Now, there are two things to pay attention to for the rows range argument. One is that it requires an order by argument before it. Logically, this makes sense, right? We need to specify an order to select specific rows to be part of a window frame. For instance, the query we have used before, if we don't provide order by argument, it does not know which ones should be considered as preceding and which ones are following. The other thing to pay attention to is that the row range argument is not available for certain functions. For example, ranking functions cannot accept this argument. That's probably why rows and range are not used as frequently as other arguments. So those are the three arguments of the over clause that we can use to define a window frame. Now let's talk about different functions and understand how the results will be different using different window functions. There are three different kinds of functions. They are aggregate function, ranking function, and analytic function. First, let's look at a few aggregate functions. Some commonly used ones include average, sum, count, mean, max, standard deviation, and variance, etc. They are pretty self-explanatory, and you may be very familiar with them. Basically, we can use them to calculate the corresponding aggregate value within each group. Using an example we have seen earlier, we can get the summary statistics on a column called value. For this query, we do not use partition by, so all the rows in the table are considered as a single group. This output table has different aggregate values for this group. The next set of functions that are pretty commonly used is the ranking functions. As the name suggests, ranking functions are aimed at calculating the rank of each row within each group. And the rank starts from 1. A few examples are row number, rank, dense rank, and n tile. They are very helpful for solving problems such as selecting the top n records within each group. As you can see, there are a few ranking functions. What are the differences between them? Let's look at an example to understand the differences. In this example, we use a few ranking functions to rank the column value. In this query, we do not use partition by. So again, all the rows in the table are considered as a single partition. When looking at the results of different window functions, it's clear that 
each function generates unique outputs. Specifically, row number returns sequential numbers from 1 to 7. Each number in the column is unique. Row number always generates sequential integers within a group. The run function returns five distinct values, 1, 2, 3, 5, and 7, and the multiple rows have the same rank. The two rows with value 5 have the same rank 3, and the two rows with value 7 have the same rank, which is 5. It means that the run function does not always return sequential integers. In this example, there is no rows with rank 4 or 6, and it provides the same rank for rows with the same value. The next function is dense rank. It's similar to the rank function in terms of having multiple rows have the same value, but the difference is that it returns sequential integers and there's no gap in the values, and that's why it's dense. So to summarize, row number and rank are similar. Row number numbers all rows sequentially, while rank provides the same numeric value for rows with the same value. Dense rank provides ranks with no gaps in the ranking values. All right, we have talked about aggregate functions and ranking functions. Finally, let's look at the third type of function, the analytic functions. These functions are used when we need to access the values of multiple rows in a window. They are frequently used to compare multiple rows and calculate the difference between rows. The two common use functions are lag and lead. Lag provides access to rows before the current row, while lead provides access to rows after the current row. For both functions, we need to specify the column name and offset, which indicates the exact number of rows before or after the current row. Note that offset cannot be a negative value. Also, we can set the default value, which will be used if a previous or following row does not exist. In this example, we first order the table by column value. Lag value 2 creates a new column with each row being two rows before the current row. And lead value 2 will create a new column with each row being two rows following the current row. Because we do not specify the default value, the value is null if it does not exist. Alright guys, we have talked about a lot of things about window functions. We have covered three ways to define window frames and three types of functions that can be used. I hope this video gives you a clear idea on what a window function is and how to write one. But this overview alone is not enough. We need to know how to use window functions to solve SQL problems. So in the very next video, I will walk you through some example questions and answers using window functions. We will dive deep into applying window functions to solve SQL problems. Stay tuned, I will see you soon.